Hey, Paul, so we just realized that there actually is air in space, even where the astronauts are. But what about gravity? Well, the gravity is also a funny thing, uh, that gravity obeys what we call an inverse square law. Okay. Basically, uh, every two objects, for example, you and me, uh, you and the mountain, we're all attracting each other from gravity. And it depends on how heavy you are and how far apart you are. So the heavier you are, the more the gravitational attraction, the further apart, the less. And it yep. drops off as the distance squared. So if you make the distance twice as far apart, you get two squared, which is four times less gravity. And then four times further away would be 16 times less gravity. So it really falls off pretty quickly. Yes and no, because it's actually the distance from the centre of the Earth affects the gravity, not from the surface. Oh, so we calculate it all from where the centre of the Earth is, not just from us standing here on the ground. From the centre of the Earth to the centre of you is what you count it, not from uh, the surfaces. Uh, okay. So if you go from here, right now we are 6,400 kilometres from the centre of the Earth. The happens to know that number. <laughs> God, I use that a lot. Um, and if we go to the International Space Station, that's another 400 kilometres up. So that means instead of being, we're not going from naught to 400, we're going from 6,400 kilometres from the centre of the Earth to 6,800 kilometres from the centre of so, the Earth. So that jump actually isn't as big because you're only going 400 kilometres out of almost 7,000 kilometres. Yes, it's about a 6% increase in radius, which means the gravity is going to go down by 6% squared, so about 12%. So that's actually not a lot. Yes, yeah, so instead of me weighing 90 kilograms as I do at the Earth's surface, I might weigh 80 kilograms up there, which isn't that different. No, it's not. I mean, you still have quite a lot. Wait, wait, wait I'm confused now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's say someone built a really tall tower. Okay. Let's say you put a skyscraper that's 400 kilometers tall. I'm sure someone will try this one day. Probably in Dubai. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> And let's say you got to the top of this tower and you stepped off. What would happen? You're in space, right? Fall. But no. there's still gravity. Yeah. And what indeed would happen is you would fall. So I step off the tower and... But that's a very fall drop from 400 kilometers. <laughs> yes, and you'd fall very fast for the first 370 kilometers. Well, there wasn't much air, but then as you got close to the bottom, you'd start probably burning up and uh, become a shooting star briefly. <laughs> so some other bad things will start happening. Wait a minute, okay, so if I was on a 400 kilometer building and I jumped off, I would fall towards the Earth, but this astronaut is floating around and playing in space. How? Yes, I mean, it seems like a paradox. It's a paradox. Yeah. I mean, according to our equations, there's gravity up there. If you step off a building, you'd fall. Yeah, why but are they falling astronauts at the, at the same height, these are astronauts in uh, Skylab, yep. which was one of the very first space stations. That's right. The reason I showed that rather than a more recent one is because they used the old converted Saturn V tank, <laughs> uh, which made they had more room to play around in. Yes, that's right. Rather the the International Space Station's kind of squished. Yes. So you can see astronauts playing all sorts of silly things around, and it sure looks like zero yeah, they're, gravity. They're, they're not falling towards the Earth. So what's going on here? How can you have apparently zero gravity, even though our equations tell us there's plenty of gravity up there. Yeah, so there clearly has to be something else that's involved here. And if you think about it, you can actually get effect of zero gravity right here on Earth. If, for example, you went to the tallest building in Canberra, which isn't that tall, um, and you went to the lift shaft at the top, and we cut the cable, I know lifts have safety features and so on. <laughs> we couldn't get this part of the film uh, approved. Uh, but let's say we disabled all those. Yep. Uh, as you fell down, it would feel like zero gravity. I mean, yeah, I guess if I've gone on a roller coaster, and a steep roller coaster, as we've gone down, it kind of feels like my stomach goes into my, you know, up, and it feels like I'm almost going to float out of my seat. Yeah, but if you're in this lift shaft and it's falling and you drop something, that something is going to be falling at the same rate as you, so it'll appear to just hover next to you as you go down. Okay. So... On Earth, if you're falling, you can get a moment, uh, it feels like zero gravity. It's yeah. what we call a free fall. That's right. So you can create zero gravity, or the feel of zero gravity, here on Earth. The trouble is you hit the bottom of the lift shaft pretty soon and gravity <laughs> comes back with a rush. So, so you stop at some point. That's right. And it doesn't have to be just falling downwards. You can actually fall upwards. So let's say we took that lift shaft and we put it in a giant catapult and fired it up into the air. I mean, uh. probably the acceleration of the catapult would kill you, but let's imagine you survive that. As you fly upwards, it would feel like everything is floating with you as you go up towards the point. So again, it would feel like no gravity as you go up, no gravity at the top, no gravity as you come down, and then once again, gravity comes back in a rush when you hit the bottom. So you can counteract the kind of feel of gravity, but there's still gravity there. That's kind of why we partially came down. Yes, I mean, it's no gravity, you just keep on going forever. That's right. And this is how they actually simulate zero gravity in NASA's famous flight, the Vomit Comet, that's also used in many movies to simulate zero gravity. That's right. What they're doing is they are flying the same trajectory that if something would be, travel if it was catapulted, a parabola. Yep. And while they're flying that, so the aircraft will 
go up and then fly basically the same way that a ball would fly, which is a parabola through the air. Um, and so while it's doing that parabola, which might give you 30, 40 seconds, maybe even a minute, it feels like zero gravity and that's how they filmed the whole thing. And that's right, that's actually how they simulate the zero gravity environment. So that's okay if all you want is a few seconds or maybe even a minute of zero gravity. But, but that's not see. I mean, some of these people have been up for over a year. Yeah, that's right. So they don't clearly fall down after a short period. They're in there for a year experiencing this kind of... So the real question is, how can you allow someone to fall in gravity for a year without hitting the bottom? And to understand this, we're going to have to think a bit about motion in space. Okay.